Hey, it's Joel, Form Next 2023 at the EOS booth in the EOS Cafe with my buddy Michael. Hi, Joel. How are you? Michael, I'm doing well. We're in the cafe. Uh, how about a cappuccino when we're done? Um, an espresso I'm good with. Espresso. I like this guy. All right, we're here in the cafe showcasing an incredible part with a really cool story. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yes. So with this part, we are trying to address the growth pains of additive manufacturing. So typically, customers are having a difficult time to find applications they can grow with. Here, we are addressing components in the die-cast sectors. This is the very first time that we can match die-cast costing at die-cast quality for additive manufactured components. Wait, so we're talking about, and this is additive, obviously, this is you know from an additive machine, but we're matching the price of a die-cast part. Correct. That's great, because die-cast parts are usually not that expensive, correct? No, correct. And additive parts, historically, sometimes are kind of expensive. So in this case, the original start-off price was in the range of 250, 260 euros for additive. Okay. The customer gave us the brain teaser, the brain knuckle, to, to get the car, part cost down to around 25 euros. Wait, from 250 euro to 25 euro? Yes. What? How did you do that? There's a few ingredients to the secret sauce, and one of the ingredients is a very, very productive machine. <laughs> to meet annual production of maybe 20,000 units a year, you have to have a system that is capable to throughput that amount of parts in 36 hours. So it's one hour per part on that system. So this, this entire cake of parts here was 36 hours? That's correct. And how many are there on here? 36. An hour per part? Yes. At the cost level? At the cost level. The other ingredient is powder. You have to meet powder prices that are in the range of a cast grade component. The fun story about the component is that air-cooled cylinder head will not make it to the shop floor. The little Michael Galba gardening tool will be electric in the future. Okay, sure. But the, the heavy lumberjack gardening tool, so to say, the, the ones with the big horsepower, big muscle, they, they are looking also a little bit different and they might be also a little bit more pricey. So oh, in the range of 40 euros, so we have a little bit more flexible area. A little bit, with. but the difference between 25 and 40 euro is not nearly the difference between 25 and 250. So we're still talking about a really significant price reduction. Yes. So what does it cost in materials? Like what is the aluminum cost to make one of these for die cast? For die casting material, you are talking about two to three euros per kilogram of the raw material. So then the aluminum to make this in additive, what does it cost? List price is in range of 45, 50 euros, something like that. You have to get the price down to 12-ish, 15-ish euros in order to meet there. Okay, so one question I've always had is, when we're talking about a die cast part and an additive part, you've quoted two different prices for the same material. Is it the same aluminum material? It is the same aluminum material, yes. It's just in, in the way it's made for additive. Correct. Ah, uh, it's more expensive. Okay, so that, that's a limitation that additive does have to overcome. Absolutely, so we have to work on that uh, as the next step. So uh, if you want to meet an annual production, you don't want to have, well, we of course as EOS want to have the vision to have <laughs> 50 true. machines on the shop floor, but the customer doesn't want to have. He wants to have three, maybe four machines that can do the annual production. Well, that makes sense. They want very high performance machines Correct. making these parts. and. You know, the, the loggers, they need these. That was our homework that we had to overcome to get a system that is that productive, that can output so many parts. So then the system that made this has gotten the additive part down to the 25 euro, the 40 euro, is that uh, true? No, it's, it's a threefold. It's a post-processing, it's the machine time, and it's the powder cost. So the one that we have to address as a OEM, as a manufacturer, is the system. So with our M3, 100, four times one kilowatt, for the very first time, we have a process that is up at that speed where the productivity gains don't matter that much anymore. So we have to address them as a second step, oh. the cost of the powder. Be oh, because the machine is already fast enough yes. to meet the customer needs, now you, can, you need to bring the cost down for the material that it makes. Correct. Or for the so material the, that it uses. The machine price has to stay at a relative constant level, but the throughput of the system has to get higher and higher. But if you meet a certain threshold, so now we have a productivity gain of factor three per laser. Okay, and what does that mean, a productivity gain of three per laser? So that means we have come from, I don't know, 200 grams of up to one kilogram of material per hour for that system type. Oh, for the entire system. For okay. the entire system. Oh, so having multiple lasers helps contribute to that throughput. Correct, but there's a, 
there's a limiting factor to that because the scanner laser optic system is one of the most expensive and difficult to control units inside there. So as EOS, we believe we don't want to join the laser race. Who has the most lasers on the system? <laughs> we want to have as many lasers as necessary, but we want to have a lot more and higher power delivered in a smarter way down into the powder bed. A higher power laser then, does that allow you to go faster or does that Correct. allow you just different materials? It allows both. It allows oh, it does. faster and allows different materials, especially high thermal conductive materials such as aluminum or copper. I was copper. just going to say, I've always heard aluminum was really difficult to do. Yes, and we've, we've cracked the code, so to say, especially on the uh, high power uh, energy input into the aluminum. So if you, if you have too much energy per time, hitting the powder, you would just vaporize it. And oh, we, have right. been, we have been crunching our brains for the last uh, months very, very hard <laughs> on how to come up with new ways to expose that, as mentioned, crack the code on how to deliver 900 watts. So here we are not talking about a process where we have a one kilowatt laser and you only utilize 400 watts. We're utilizing really 900 watts of the power down into the powder bed. Wow. Four so, times. So, okay, when we're dealing with aluminum then, that's a lot of heat generated. How do you keep everything proper within there with so much heat? Technology. So technology <laughs> such as smart fusion. Smart fusion helps us to regulate this. The theory behind smart fusion is um, your, your base plate temperature is, let's say, 35 degrees centigrade. Aluminum melts at, I don't know, 550 degrees centigrade, and that's the delta that you need to hit. If your build he is heating up all the time during the build process, what would happen is that uh, you would, uh, just with the same power, constantly shooting into the powder bed, um, melt and vaporize the material and create some slurish uh, stuff. Right. Smart Fusion can control that and can correct for that. So if the part and the building platform temperature or the, the layer temperature is getting hotter and hotter, Smart Fusion is regulating in this area where it's needed to reduce, for instance, the energy input. Energy input can be reduced oh. by either reducing the power or increasing the scan speed. I so see. you don't have to, with Smart Fusion, deal with minimum layer times such as things or ghost parts sometimes customers are using. Um, you don't have any uh, downsides on that. You're just printing at the same speed and a lot faster. Like you said, the technology, right, the Smart Fusion, the software then is helping power the machine to create better parts because correct. it kind of it knows where trouble might be and it can correct for correct laser heat and, and everything that go okay, okay that's really cool so in the end you get a, a job that is extremely homogeneous and we have uh, demonstrated also in papers of uh, how the quality of the component also uh, stays at a at a constant level no matter where you print it no matter how dense the packing factor is oh that, right because packing packing for parts is one of the things that software really has to take into effect because how close things are and how close the laser paths are, there's worry there. Correct. But not anymore. Not anymore. Oh. This is fascinating stuff, and I'm really happy you told me the story of this material and the technology behind it, but people are going to want to know more about it. Can you tell them where to go to find out more? Come to the EOS website, look for the Hitchhiker's Guide on Smart Fusion, and learn more. Feel free to reach out to us. We're there for you. We will never let you alone, so you will always have a helping hand with us. There you go. Well, listen, if you made this fire awesome, don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for cause you believe in. Print all the metal things. And as always, high five. You ready? Nailed it. <laughs> Want to get an espresso? Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it.